Okay, let us get started with the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure for signals and uh, that, that concept should basically lead us to basically treating signals as points in the signal space right which is derived in the last uh, module that uh, the error in the reconstruction the squared error in the reconstruction is basically the original energy in the signal minus the norm square of the signal which whose components are basically these SKs in the signal space. So, we will basically first get how to get the basis is, is, is the first question right because once you get the basis then you can represent them and then you can compute how good your representation is. So, we will start with an example and I think you can now link the signals to vectors and, and, and basically invoke the same proof uh, that you did for uh, the Gram-Schmidt ortho orthogonalization procedure for vectors. Now, let us start with an example. Suppose I think of these waveforms like this S1 of t is 1 for capital T by 3 seconds some time units. I have S2 of t which is for two thirds of this time this is uh, this is 1 it is uh, 0 otherwise. S3 of t is is 1 between capital T by 3 to capital T so many units of time and we have S4 of t which is 1 for capital T units of time. So, if you just observe these signals under the definition of the inner product in the integral sense right you can you can figure out easily that some of them are orthogonal pairwise, but are they you know are some of these uh, linearly independent is another question that you might ask, but obviously for example, if you consider S4 this signal here right S4 is basically S1 plus S3. which means that in this signal set that I have S1, S2, S3 and S4 some of them are linearly dependent right. The question is can I construct an orthonormal set for these signals. And these type of uh, you know rectangular pulses sometimes you know in power 
systems etc you find these with stepper motors etc you find these step pulses coming through right and uh, I do not know if one can think about an application of this signal representation problem in, in the power engineering space, but at least you can kind of relate to these type of waveforms uh, that we see they are not unrealistic waveforms ok. So, let us see how we can apply Graham Schmidt also normalization procedure for signals exactly the same way that we did you start with the first basis. So, I have S 1 of t divided by the norm of S 1 of t this norm is basically 1 right. So, at least I am setting this to norm 1. So, this is S 1 of t divided by square root of integral of S 1 square t d t right. <coughs> so, it is pretty straightforward that this is root of 3 by t for this duration of time and it is 0 else right. You take the you square it up 1 square. So, you just have uh, root of t by 3 in the denominator and you just flip it out it is root of 3 by t and S 1 is 1 basically and, and, and that is trivially 1 root of 3 by t times 1 uh, for this interval 0 else. So, similarly F 2 of t is S 2 of t minus S 2 1 this is basically the inner product of S 2 with F 1 on F 1 of t right in you have to remove that component out. And if you want to normalize this, this is basically norm of Now, how do you compute? Um, so, now S 2. So, if you take the integral of S 2 with F 1, you just uh, with, with F 1 you dot it right S 2 with, with, with S of t S 2 with F 1 in, in the direction of F 1 is, is what is what we need to do right. You, you, you can take the take the inner inner product right. So, I would say S i j here in general is basically so basically if it is s 2 1 is s 2 of t the inner product of s 2 of t with f 1 of t under this norm under this this definition right s i j is s i of t f j of t and so s 2 1 is s 2 with with f 1 right. So, if you if you carefully did this math. So, you just observe the signal when I take s 2 with s 1 right if you just observe this diagram when I take S 2 with F 1 this exists only in 0 to t by 3 because from t by 3 to 2 t by 3 it just does not exist it, it the inner product is, is, is going away. So, what you are left with the pi is basically this signal 0 to t by 3 defined from uh, 0 to capital T by 3 right uh, 1 
from 0 to capital T by 3 that is what you have for uh, for uh, that pi of the signal. So, basically when you subtract all these things and when you normalize you will land up with root of 3 by t. So, basically now you can think about when you subtracted it S2 has S2 is basically the signal when you take the inner product is, is what you get when you subtract it you will land up with basically the pi from t by 3 to 2 t by 3 right it is very straightforward right. This example is very illustrative not much of uh, math you have to do just if you just see through the figures you can kind of imagine what they are. So, basically this is from one third of a time to two thirds. So, typically this capital T is a signaling period in terms of signals I mean for communication signals there is something called a signaling period for these pulses and that is what it, it means in the in the signal processing sense, but you know for, for math it, you do not have to worry about it some t seconds ok. So, this is 0 else and you do the math for F 3 the same way take S 3 compute the inner product of S 3 with F 2 then S 3 with F 1 remove those components out and just normalize the signal is just a routine trick that you will have to do. So, this is basically if you can guess it is root 3 by t 2 t by 3 0 else. Okay. So, now we have F 1, F 2 and F 3 and let us see how they look. This is my F 1. my F 2 is from 2 t by 3 to t and F 3 of t is from 2 t by 3 to t this is root 3 upon t right this is how I have and if I want to represent my S 1 my S 1 is basically 1 so, S 1 if you just recall is this waveform which is 1 from 0 to t by 3 right. So, this is S 1 t. Now, this is basically if you want to express it in terms of F 1 this is basically root t by 3 times uh, root of uh, t by th root t by 3 times root 3 by t gives you 1. So, therefore, this is square root of t by 3 in terms of the coordinate on f 1 0 component on f 2 0 component on f 3 right. So, you can think about this corresponds to f 1, this corresponds to f 2, this corresponds to f 3. It makes sense because f 2 and f 3 have no components 
and in f 1 it is root of t upon 3 of f 1 right. This is this is the coordinate representation for for the signal s 1. So, s 1 which is this vector is basically sort of I would say it is equivalent to this. This, this signal is basically this coordinate in this space and I think it is very important to get this feel just by inspection if you observe right the support really there is no uh, overlapping support for these f 1, f 2 and f 3 right. That means, f 1 and f 2 they are orthogonal mutually all these f 1, f 2, f 3 are orthogonal and they are normal as well I mean they are orthonormal and, and because they are normal you can write them in this in this coordinate form because you have to normalize the length normalize. So, therefore, this normality is taking care this root 3 by t is, is basically normalizing it is very very important to normalize. So, now you, you get a sense here. So, S 2 this vector can be is um, so S 2 is, is is what. So, if, if we go through uh, we have from 0 to t by 3 it, and then from t by 3 to 2 t by 3. So, therefore, you have components from f 1 and f 2 as well right. So, therefore, you have a root t by 3 a root t by 3 is 0. So, you can just do this and convince yourself S 3 is basically 0 root t by 3 root t by 3 and S 4 has all these components. So, we are done because this was the aim where we wanted to start with in the beginning of module 1 where we wanted to write signals as vectors and indeed we have written signals as vectors. So, now these signals S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 though I have given you 4 signals they reside in a three dimensional signal space spanned by f 1, f 2 and And now it is very easy now for you to figure out what is the angle between S 4 and S 3, what is the length of S 3 or S 4 everything you could you could easily figure figure out right. So, the length and the angle that we are used to in the vectors can be equivalently transformed or translated rather to the the lengths and the angles for signals as well. So, the geometry of vectors can translate to the geometry of signals in the signal space and now since we have vectors uh, signal is transformed to a vector using this appropriate coordinate system a lot of uh, linear algebra can be applied to signals basically it is now just vectors now ok. So, we are ending this module here.